So this is probably just the beginning of talking about fats in freeze-dried foods. Let's be honest. A lot of my videos are not like entertainment of the year kind of videos. They can be a little bit dry. I'm not really a good entertainer. I don't spill the eggs on the floor and have the dog lick them up. I don't do the thumbnail that looks like this. We're going to try some five-year-old meat. Will it be bad? I, I don't do any of those. I just try to present a true depiction of what I'm doing, try to explain why I'm doing it, and let you follow along. I'm not even trying to get other people to do the way that I'm doing it. Sometimes I record way too much information. I go more than needed. And part of that is because people are interested and want to know and they ask the questions. So I just keep adding that. One thing that does kind of make me sad, though, is when people say things about the fat in the freeze dry, that you can't do any meats with fat in it or any foods with fat in it, that you have to take your ground beef and cook it and then wash it in very hot water twice. Um, it's just not true. They say that, well, all freeze dry companies take all the fat out of their meat first. No, they don't. And I don't know where people get that from. So this will probably end up being kind of a long video. Please stay around. Uh, watch it to the end if you can. If you can't, just look at some of the links. I'll leave them in the pinned comment or in the uh, or in the description look at them go to the commercial sites look at how much fat is in some of the products then when you're at other people's sites and they say well no you have to do this with the meats to or it won't work or it'll go bad you can just bring up well mountain house hamburger has this much fat in it and it's guaranteed for 30 years there are so many videos out there or so I'm told, uh, about fats in freeze-dried food. I get comments all the time on my channel about the fat. I don't watch other people's videos for the most part. I've seen a few in the past. I don't have time for entertainment videos about freeze-drying. I'm not going to watch ones that use the YouTube face in their thumbnail. You won't believe what I just did and what the results were. And then there's nothing surprising. I would believe it or I wouldn't believe it because they did poor work on it and poor science on it. I don't watch them because there's no point to them. I've seen some five, six years ago. They're entertainment. Uh, they spill the eggs on the floor and let the dog lick it up. And that's supposed to be teaching us how to freeze dry. It doesn't. It teaches us that they didn't think it through. In fact, the reality is they probably did think it through and thought this would be a fun, entertaining video for YouTube. And it probably worked. I'm not after necessarily growing the channel. It's kind of nice when it does. It makes me feel like I'm contributing something to the group as a whole. When they say, after you cook the hamburger, you have to wash it in hot water twice and drain it to make sure every bit of fat is gone. Why? Uh, as an example, so this is one of the, well, let me see if I covered what I wanted to cover. There was a recent video that I was told about where the person that was doing freeze drying was opening a bag of meats and it had gone bad. I haven't experienced anything remotely like that, and I suspect strongly that it wasn't dry when it was bagged. Fats don't rehydrate the food. You need water to rehydrate it. The, the person seemed to be saying from, from what I was told that because it had fat in it, now it's kind of, I think they use the words reconstituted, which... Uh, that's for concentrated orange juice. We're not unconstituting our food. We don't have to reconstitute it. We're rehydrating it. All we did was take out the hydration. We took out the water. We're going to put it back in. 
The point is though, if it's not all the way dry, it's going to fail. It's going to go bad. Show you a few of the comments that I've seen. Whoa, let's try that down here. I don't know how to use this thing. So hopefully this will work out. This is one that I had recently. The person had commented on a couple of different videos with the same cut and paste um, comment. And it said, probably meant warning, meat that is not extremely low in fat and has been cooked and thoroughly rinsed with very hot water will not store long term when freeze dried. Costco chicken is saturated in fat. You may get two or three years storage at most if the fat has not been removed. I'm going to strongly disagree with that and I'm going to bring facts for you. Okay, the next it said commercially freeze dried meat has had the fat removed. Well, that's blatantly false. And again, I will show you the information in a minute. It says no one really knows how long home freeze dried meat will store, but it won't be long because of the fat content. That could be true, but they've been doing home freeze drying for at least a decade and the disasters that might occur again are probably because it wasn't 100% dry before they bagged it or they used a crummy bag and moisture got into it. And then I do agree with the next statement. Be careful. Just because something is on YouTube doesn't mean it's correct. Yes, like this comment being on YouTube, it's not correct. Anyway, I, I gave my reply, which is also a cut and paste because I've seen this so many times. So moving on, these are some of the comments I've received in the last few months. And this first one is a really good, valid piece. Uh, remember that commercial lasts 30 years because it's not only the oxygen absorber, but they also nitrogen flush it and use rosemary extract as a natural deterrent to rinse for rancidity. Yeah, there's it is an antioxidant. You can use some rosemary extract. Uh, also, vitamin C is an antioxidant in foods though the rosemary some of the literature i've seen says that it might not hold up well during the freeze drying process but it's still going to help a lot before it even gets to that stage in general raw meats are probably going to do a better job than cooked meats because the heating process of the fats accelerate the oxidation of it. At least that's the literature I've seen. One of the sources that I use besides all of the online things that I can find is this little book right here. Well, this isn't a little book. This is a four volume um, set that has lots of things on everything to do with food and food production. It's a really nice book. If you're lucky enough and can get it at a good price, uh, it's wonderful. Otherwise, it's kind of too expensive to buy. Uh, I happen to get an awesome deal on it. And so I have that. The comment about the rosemary. Yes, and I listed some of the the publications that talks about using rosemary as an antioxidant. It seems to be a good item. They also use BHT and another preservative. I, I mean, it's people call it a preservative, but basically it's an antioxidant that helps it from oxidizing, which helps keep it from going rancid. Interestingly, this person had also commented on somebody else asking about do they like to have raw eggs or cooked eggs for freeze drying. This person uh, commented about how they do their eggs. Eggs when they're freeze dried are almost half fat by weight. It didn't seem to concern this person at all the amount of fat in that, but yet the minuscule amount of fat in a Costco rotisserie chicken kind of pushed them over the edge. And then an interestingly interesting one about spam broke their machine. Um, I don't even know what that means. And they didn't respond when I asked how did spam break the machine. 
so I do not have any idea what they mean by spam broke their machine. And another one about refried beans and the oils in it. Uh, and this one was kind of interesting because they were wondering about the about the oil and fat from the bacon or the bacon grease and been told by other people that do freeze drying that you shouldn't do that for long term storage. And it says, obviously, you don't agree. Well, it's not about me agreeing or disagreeing. It's about what's being done. Let's close that one back out. And that one. Now, what I want to share with people, and please, when you see people talking about, well, you can't have any fat in your freeze dried. So you're on the other channels and you're looking at that and they're, they're talking about, you can't have any fat in your freeze dried. You have to trim every bit of it off. It's going to go bad. Try to just give them information about, well, the commercial companies are doing this and they have plenty of fat in them. We want a good community of freeze dryers so that we can all learn from it and work together and grow that community. Maybe make that segment of YouTube more vibrant and interesting. So we want to be respectful, but you can still point out or mention companies that have freeze dried foods for many years. Mountain House is one of the oldest. It's like 60 years that they've been in business making these freeze dried meals. I had these when I was in my teens. Um, so a long time ago, they still are out there. They give them a 30 year lifespan with the exception of, I think their ice cream sandwiches are only like three years. So one of their staples of life is the shortest, but anyway, this is their scrambled eggs with bacon. Here's the nutritional information on that. So the package has 23 grams of fat. Okay. That's in a 63 gram package. So we have 63 grams. And out of this 63 grams, 23 grams are fat. That's more than one third of the weight when it's freeze dried is fat. So please stop telling me that you can't freeze dry anything with fat because it's absurd. This is guaranteed for 30 years. Of course you can have fats in there. It's all in the way you process it and protect it. Okay, next one, ground beef. And if we go to ground beef, uh, let's get the right tab open or the right page. Okay, there we go. This one, a 37 grams of the dry mix. 15 grams of that is fat. 15 grams out of 37. I don't have the calculator on me, but that sounds like about 40%. Okay, next. Macaroni and cheese. Still on Mountain House. Out of 64 grams of the dry mix. That's one serving. That's this column. 14 grams from fat, about one fourth. Veggie chorizo, breakfast scramble, 56 grams of the dry mix, 17 grams of fat. Okay. Here's another brand. Now, technically this one isn't freeze dried. This is dried whole egg powder. It's probably a spray drying process. If it doesn't say that it's freeze dried, it's probably not freeze dried. And it's probably the spray drying because that's a cheaper method of freeze drying or of drying. And it's perfectly acceptable for lots of kinds of uh, liquidy kinds of things to begin with. 
So spray drying is, is something that is often done. So on this one, do I have that on a different tab? Okay. That one, can we see that good enough? How do we zoom in? In a 13 gram serving, there's six grams of fat. Eggs are nearly 50% fat by weight when it's dried. Okay, next one. This is again, uh, Augustin Farms brand. This is their freeze dried beef. And in a 34 gram serving, it's 10 grams of fat. So again, a little less than one third, more than a quarter, less than a third of the weight is fat. All right, next, save the best for last. This is freeze dry wholesalers. Look at the fats on these beauties. So this is one of the trays getting ready for their freeze dryer. These are the bags. You can see the marbling of fat on those pieces. You can see it right through the bag. You can see the fat around the edges. Now, I honestly don't know how much of the fat goes into the bag because I know after it's freeze dried, sometimes it's easier to pop the fat off of the meat because it's uh, more loose. And so they may have done that after they dried it. They also have raw burger patties and I've done raw burger patties. They've come out well. Um, we've seen, hopefully you've seen my video on that and I've got a little tab for that, but this is their burger patties going on to the freeze dryer trays. And it looks like by the size of the trays, if they have a harvest, right, this looks like the large tray. So they may be using a, a bank of freeze dryers from harvest, right? I have no idea. I didn't see anything saying so on their, their site. Okay, there they are again on the rack. And here's the information. So the four ounce serving or quarter pound, 113 grams, 23 grams of fat. These are the burger patties that I get when I'm freeze drying. I use the five ones, five burgers for one pound. And the three ones, I'm pretty sure that these, yeah, one third pound uh, before packaged or before freeze dried. Okay, and they give theirs a 10 year shelf life on their products and they believe that they will probably last longer, but they're guaranteeing them for 10 years. I know from ours that it's, I can do five and a half years. That's all I have for, for numbers because I haven't had it for longer than that. Again, the one I get and then the nutritional labels. So 112 grams, 23 grams of fat, because it's 20% of it is fat. And that's the same as what this is. It's almost exactly. So I'm assuming they're using 20% fat ones. So the point is that these are essentially the same. The ones that they're doing here, besides the fact that these are one third pound and I do one fifth pound, they're essentially the same patties, even the same kind of pattern on them. So they're probably a commercially made frozen patty that they're receiving this way and then they're freeze drying them and packaging them. And there they are in the bag after they've been freeze dried. And there they are in the window. It was 20% fat before it was dried. That's 6.4 ounces of fat and the rest is essentially protein. That might mean that this is approximately 64% fat by weight in this bag right now. 64%. Okay. 
I don't want to hear people saying you have to wash it in hot water to get rid of every speck of fat before you uh, freeze dry it and bag it. No, you don't. I mean, obviously, you don't want any loose fat hanging around or, or liquid fat around your, your burgers if you're going to cook them ahead of time. But cooking them ahead of time will speed up the oxidation process. So you probably have a, a higher chance for rancidity if you cook it first. But if you cook it and have the rosemary oil or something else in there to help protect it during that time, I suspect that's why Mountain House has rosemary in so many of the recipes. I don't know. I'm not a food scientist. I don't work for Mountain House. I'm not even all that fond of rosemary. But the literature I've uh, read says that the rosemary extract that's used for antioxidant things in foods has very little flavor left. So they might be using it in a different way. I don't know. This particular company is not using rosemary in it. Their ingredients are beef. So their beef patty ingredients is beef, nothing else. If you've ever been to Costco and bought bacon bits, they're just on the shelf. They're shelf stable for a couple years. That's not even dried. There's still moisture in that, but they've packaged it properly and they've cured it properly. It should do quite well. Okay. So this is, we're not going to watch this whole thing, but if you haven't already seen this, I invite you to, to watch it. We're just using some of the hamburger patties. So these are ones that had been freeze dried four and a half years earlier. So these are 20% fat before they're dried. If they're 20% before they're dried, that means they're over 50% now because of the loss of weight. This is, these are going to be coming out of this bag are 50% fat by weight or somewhere in that area. Okay. Once they're them. rehydrated, those well, will still be 20% fat. I'm going to get a paper towel now, under these. Remember these when, raw. okay. Uh, so they need to be treated like raw. So like I'll wash my hands afterwards and everything. I was just going to mention that when you're doing freeze drying of raw meats and raw things, I don't mix the raw meats and things that don't need to be cooked. So I wouldn't put apples and raw hamburger patties in the freeze dryer at the same time. I do all the raw meats in consecutive batches and then I sanitize the whole system to make sure that I don't cross contaminate because that's a real thing. It's just like if you were doing regular raw wet meats. The only difference is it doesn't transfer as, uh, as much because it's dry, but I'm going to still treat it as if it's wet raw meat because it still is raw meat. But that's kind of a separate issue from this video, which is more as fats. And if you'd like to have a discussion on this, let me know. I'll do a live stream and we can discuss it as close to real time as possible. There's a lot of stuff to read. I look to commercial companies and what they're doing. If they can do it, we can too. It just may take differences in the processes. It's just like if you're working in a food kitchen and they're developing a new recipe for a pound cake. You do that in the test kitchens and then you figure out your recipe and then you scale it up to the oven that holds a thousand or five thousand or a continuous oven. It's not exactly the same. It's just close. And so you have a starting point and then you go through and make your changes kind of the same here, except we're kind of going backwards. We're going from the freeze dry people that can do thousands of pounds at a time, literally in one batch to 
10 pounds, or if you have the big machine, 30 pounds. But you're going, we're going backwards and we're trying to scale it back down. And so our process will probably need some adjustments. Doesn't mean we can't do it. It just means we have to figure out exactly what we need. Anyway, so these are the patties from four years ago or four and a half years ago. They just feel like little lumps of ground up cardboard or if you've ever done um, some modeling projects where you you grind up cardboard in a blender and then you get it wet and then you can build sculpturing kind of things out of, out of it for kids projects that's kind of what this feels like it doesn't feel greasy it doesn't feel anything it, it just feels like cardboardy kind of stuff has no odor at all that I, that's detectable or so low that it's basically nothing. And it smells exactly the same as w when it went into the bag. Yeah. And again, I'm talking about the fact that it just doesn't really feel like anything. Okay. So, so anyway, I'm going to rehydrate that in a couple of different ways. And then we ended up cooking them. Um, they came out real well and then we used the rest of them as ground up because we we were getting some of these for a recipe that I was working on the point is that was 80 20 hamburger 20 percent fat before it is freeze dried there's lots of fat in there yes you can do fat in the freeze dryer you have to do it properly you have to make sure it's dry. So people that have had their their raw meats or cooked meats, whatever, go bad and they think it's because the fat's in it, I would want evidence. Mountain House guarantees theirs for 30 years. Has 15 grams of fat out of 37. They guarantee it for 30 years. So don't let them tell you, you have to wash your cooked ground beef in super hot water twice and then wring it dry. If you want to do that, that's fine. Don't tell me I have to do that. Certainly don't try to do the, like this one, commercially freeze dried meat has had the fat removed. No, it hasn't. Why do people think that? Do they not have the ability to even read a label on freeze dried food? Before I freeze dried my first batch, I had looked at all of the labels I could on the Mountain House website, on the, the Agassiz Farms website. So from day one, I knew it was doable. I just didn't know exactly what I needed to do to make it work. But then I constantly get people telling me that it won't work. I uh, hear that other YouTube um, video content makers are telling their viewers that it can't be done, that you have to trim every piece of meat. You have to trim every piece of fat off it or it'll go bad. They'll, they'll even give demonstrations on how theirs is bad in the bag. Yeah, because you didn't do a good job out of it. It's not because of the meat uh, or the fat. Something else went wrong. Try to figure out what went wrong. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to close this out uh, because I've just been ranting and raving. And if you'd like to go into more depth, let me know if you'd like to see it done as a live stream so you could ask questions and we could discuss them. I don't know the answers to all these. Sometimes when people leave me a comment and say, hey, you need to do this or that, I might spend five or six hours going down the rabbit hole of finding out about that thing. Uh, and it's very interesting. That's where I found out about the freeze dry wholesalers. I thought, hey, I want to look at what that company has because Mountain House doesn't have any raw items like that. Um, and I knew that I had done them. I know that they had lasted for at least four and a half or five and a half years and I've had no problems with them. So I want to see how those worked 
or how they were doing theirs. It looks like they're doing them the same way I do mine. Take the frozen slabs, put them on a tray, put them in the freeze dryer. Come back later. Anyway, if you'd like to discuss it more, let me know. Leave something in the comments. I've literally made videos before because a single person has asked. If anybody's interested, we'll try some kind of live stream. I don't know how to do the software for it to do like the picture in the picture. Uh, but I can certainly learn. And so let me know. Thanks for watching. And please just use some links. I'll put some of these links in the pinned comment or up in the um, or in the description. It's probably best not to send the link to other ones. I know at least on, on my YouTube thing, if it has a link in it, it won't show me the comment. I have to go find it on um, its... Um, it's held for review or something. So anyway, so that's probably not the best way, but you could just say, well, Mountain House has cooked ground beef that has 15 grams of fat in a 37 gram serving. That's strong evidence. So all I'm asking is to just keep in mind while you're watching freeze dry videos, what the commercial companies are doing and just know that we should be able to do that too with some perhaps some changes in processes or changes in time or a slight alteration in the recipe but we should be able to be doing the same thing so thank for watching and i'll see you on the next video i'm working on a video of two or three batches of beef stew so making and freeze drying beef stew that'll be coming soon